something inside so strong. I said, something inside so strong. Yes, you know it. There's something inside so strong. Woo-hoo. Something inside so strong. Yeah. When you make health care a priority, we make health care a priority. As legislators, when we hear your voices, when we receive your emails, when you come out and do a march like this, that gains attention. Don't ever think that the work that you do to rally like this or to march like this goes unnoticed. It goes noticed by the people who have empathy, who have compassion, and also have fiscal responsibility. This has been a great week for us. It was great watching Donald Trump and, and his, uh, his, band of, uh, his band of followers uh, finally accept the fact that the ACA, the Affordable Care Act, is the law of the land and it's gonna stay that way. It's high time. It's high time our representatives in Washington who let us down on this Affordable Care Act, Joni Ernst and Chuck Grassley, it's, it's, high, it's high time they start listening to the people of Iowa because the people of Iowa want them to walk across the aisle and to work with Democrats and to fix the things that are not working in the Affordable Care Act to make sure it works for all Americans. You know, when it comes to health care, we're all Americans and we all, we all have a right to health care, in my opinion. And it, it just absolutely astonishes me to hear Donald Trump say he wants the Affordable Care Act to collapse. What he's really saying is he wants poor, he wants poor Americans to die. And that ain't right. Anyway, um, you know, I want to thank, uh, first of all, um, Senator uh, John McCain. I don't always agree with him. You know, I don't. But he's a, he's a warrior, he's a hero, right? He's, he's given his life for this nation in more ways than one. And because of his vote on Thursday night, I think it was Thursday night, you know, and the, um, the audacity of two wonderful Republican women, Susan Collins, Susan Collins of Maine, yay, New England, and Lisa Murkowski from Alaska, you know, go Alaska. They too are women warriors, and I'm so happy about that. You know, I mean, we need more women. You know what they say, if you give it to a woman, it'll get done. So ladies, let's do this, seriously. The real heroes last night, two nights ago, were the untold millions across the country who showed us what democracy looks like. The real heroes are the women people with disabilities, LGBT people, people of color who led the charge with unrelenting direct action. From the Women's March in January when many of us gathered together to this moment, we have met the Trump administration's attempts to curtail our rights and liberties with our collective strength. In town halls, rallies, and protests across the country, people declared with one voice that robbing millions of their health care insurance is wrong, blocking millions of patients from seeking care at Planned Parenthood health centers harms public health, and gutting Medicaid would be disastrous for people with disabilities. Working in concert with our friends and allies at Planned Parenthood, Move On, Indivisible, and so many others, together we all cast the deciding votes. So if you don't remember anything else about this, just remember, we're not done. It's going to look different, but it's going to be there. Paul Ryan is out to get seniors big time. He wants that money not for us, he wants it for Wall Street. They've been dying on getting Social Security since it went into effect because they realized it was, ooh, a cash cow. Well, it's our money. It's our money, it's an earned benefit. Social Security and Medicare we have worked for, we have paid for, never forget it. And I'm gonna say to the Speaker of the House, 
Nevertheless, they persisted. But what I have is my voice. At the local, state, and federal level, whether it's fighting for health care, upholding the rights of our LGBTQ sisters and brothers, particularly those who have chosen to serve our country. <laughs> Defending IPERS and our public workers, insisting that our schools be funded, the list seems endless. I plan to stand up and fight back. I'm going to work every single day to make sure that those we elect represent us, not the Koch brothers and others like them. I'm going to keep calling the rec representatives in DC and here in Iowa. I'm gonna attend their town halls. I'm gonna show up at the Capitol. I'm gonna door knock for the issues and candidates I believe in. I'm gonna write letters to the editor and attend gatherings like this to get re-energized and to feel supported. If we all work together, we can make sure that especially after this next election, we are the ones being represented, not the president or the governor's buddies and their campaign donors. Will you join me? Will you stand up, fight back? Stand up, fight back! For people with disabilities particularly, um, after we, after we atta attain that goal and everybody in Iowa is covered, we've got to turn our attention to making sure that everybody in the country is covered. And as a person, as an individual, I'm part of a group that's espousing Medicare for all, for every um, American. And um, the reason that, that this is important is that if I were to move, as I did from West Virginia to the Midwest, my health care would remain the same if it were Medicare for all. If, every, if we had a single payer system, um, our health care would remain the same. I, I wouldn't go to Missouri and not have coverage, and I wouldn't go to Missouri and have different coverage than I have. It would be uh, a consistent universal health care for everybody in the, in the country. And so um, that's kind of where I'm headed. I hope that we'll start a conversation around that um, that, that leads to meaningful action. And um, I just want to thank everybody for coming out and for, for, for speaking truth to power and um, continue to be health care voters. Thank you. To my way of thinking, only by going after the root cause of our present health care crisis are we going to fix things. And that root cause is the insanity of thinking that a predatory, for-profit insurance system can provide health care to 300 plus million Americans without bankrupting us all, or killing us all, or both. Because here's the big secret. For-profit health insurance lives and breathes a financial model in, a way in which it makes money not by providing you care, but by denying you care. Not by paying for your care, but, but for making you pay for it, and pay for it, and pay for it, until you are finally squeezed into dust. Now, to my way of thinking, the only way we are going to fix Obamacare and the health care mess we are in is to take health insurance away from the private, profit-driven, blood-sucking marketplace where it will never be operated to the public interest, and return it to where it belongs in the first place, with the people. And while I say this is my way of thinking, I am not alone. I am in solidarity with a supermajority of more than 60% of all Americans, including some 70% of independents, some 90% of Democrats, and even, even get this, 40% of Republicans who support and are increasingly demanding national improved Medicare for all. When I say union, you say, yes, union, yes. union. Yes. When I say health care, you say now, health care, health care. I was uh, at a meeting and my wife sends me a text and says, uh, I'm at the ER. And so that is kind of at a point in which my family's life changed forever. Uh, she went from the course of maybe a Friday to a Monday, from being uh, just kind of having a cold to being almost completely paralyzed. And without going into details of the condition, it's this really weird thing called Guillain-Barre that is a nervous system disorder. I'll tell you what, after, and, and, and as a union member, I've got good insurance, but 
you know, when you get, and she, she had to do everything again. She, she had to learn how to walk again. She had to learn to write again. She had to learn to do, speak again. And I tell you what, you want to talk about death panels. When I get a call from some random person in a cubicle in Nashville or something, they're the death panel when they call me and tell me, uh, we think that's the best your wife is ever going to get. So uh, we'd like you to find a nursing home for her to stay in in about three days. That ain't right. Now, they were wrong. because She's walking again. She's, you, you wouldn't be able to tell that there's much wrong. And she still has some issues. But uh, you want to talk about a death panel. They exist already. They're in a lot of these uh, offices downtown here. They weren't offering help. They were offering opposition. They chose a cynical path. They believed that it would be better for them to oppose the changes to health care that our country desperately needed to the very end. And once it finally passed, they pledged to repeal it. They voted 60 times to repeal it. And they have been championing against it. They have demonized it. They have been collecting all of their complaints. They complain about the individual mandate. They, they raise their ire about the concern about the shrinking pools or the marketplaces that are struggling like they are here in Iowa, how we've lost all of our carriers. They raise these complaints, but do they offer any solutions? No, they have not offered any solutions. They are a party that have painted themselves into the corner. They have promised to repeal and they have no idea what to replace it with. Senator McCain said that very thing this last week. He said, we don't have a plan, and I don't know if we ever will. And while we did achieve a huge victory this week, the push to repeal Obamacare and defund Planned Parenthood is over for now, and millions of Americans woke up yesterday to the relief that they will have health care. But we know this fight is not over. We are still in the throes of a health care crisis in our state. Just a month ago, Planned Parenthood closed four health centers. The successful Iowa Family Planning Network waiver ended in 14,600 patients lost their preferred health care provider. Patients continue to call us for appointments with providers they can no longer see. Iowans need family planning, birth control, STD testing, and cancer screenings, but anti-women lawmakers in the Iowa legislature have let them down. Because of dangerous anti-women laws that came from legislators under that dome, women now have to hear about non-existent complications to safe and legal abortion. Women that get terrible news after 20 weeks of pregnancy no longer get to make a private health care decision. As democratic socialists, we believe that what happens in the economy is actually, bear with me here, political. Who gets to, act, who gets to eat or sleep indoors? Who gets insulin for diabetes? All that depends not on some chart with red or green arrows or the will of some invisible hand, but choices made by people with the power to make them. In the case of healthcare right in this state, people who are acting with no regard for the millions of lives that they're set to ruin. When an insurance company denies life -saving, a life-saving mastectomy to a woman they found out has some skin condition, that executive chooses to put that money back in his pocket. That's a choice. So what we are feeling and seeing as we come together to join hundreds of rallies and actions across the country is ordinary people discovering their power to make a different choice. You look around, you hear stories of, I think, organizations like ADAPT, where people were putting their bodies in line, getting dragged out of wheelchairs in Mitch McConnell's office. You hear people yelling across this entire country, and you can't help but imagine just for a second what it would be like for all of us to live without that fear of how we're going to take care of ourselves. Why is business now, suddenly, this year now, starting to pay attention to health care reform? And why is this group starting to say things like, we need Medicare for all? Why has business been silent about this forever, 
and most of them, not all, most of them, and all of a sudden we're seeing Warren Buffett and all of these other business leaders now talking about Medicare for all. Why is that? And the reason is because we've finally passed that tipping point. Ten years ago, health care was one of the many things that businesses paid partially for. It was one of many things. If I would go in and talk to a CEO someplace, he would be about health Medicare for all, he would be thinking, well, so okay, health care expense, that's a part of my benefit expense, well that's a part of my employee expense, well that's a part of my overhead, well that's a part of my, you know. But now, the last couple of years, for a lot of businesses, health care is actually their number two cost driver, their number two piece of expense, and it's the most wildly out of control. So all of a sudden we've moved from marginal to core for the business community. The business community sees healthcare as a ball and chain around their ankle. And it's dragging them down and it's slowing them down and it's making, and the, and the rest of the world doesn't have that for the business community. So our business community is finally realizing that they're losing globally because of this ball and chain and they wanna get rid of it. Once they understand that there's actually a way to get rid of it by giving Medicare for all, improved Medicare for all, the more they understand this, and this is percolating through a lot of first-tier businesses, so to speak, and we're going to see more of them coming around. Once they get, once they realize this, they're all about it. <laughs> well, as you say, I want to show you guys here who really is the Women's March of Iowa. We have a great leadership, and these women are amazing, and I have many other women that at each one of these other locations today, six locations, six cities in Iowa. We spanned it. We've had great success. We've um, brought very well attention to nationally. Iowa is definitely on the map as being one of the top resistors and um, of the U.S. Are we? Um, they are very proud of us. Uh, let's just say. And but the main thing is I'm really proud about is it's not only these women up here but everyone else that came aboard. This is something that other organizations we came all to the table because this isn't just about one organization. This isn't about one issue. This is about all of us coming together and bringing the the people the people power because we are going to be the ones that make this change and we have a fight a long fight in front of us and this is just the start so today i hope you guys enjoyed you got to have your hear the stories get amped up and just be looking out for the next and i want to thank everyone that worked so hard to make this happen sat out here i hope everyone got wonderful information got some more leads but you know what let's take this fight let's keep it going um we all of us up here are affected by health care there's no this doesn't matter <laughs> who we are what organization we're from we all are a threat and so if we stand together the stronger we'll be so thank you guys and let's let's take this fight on let's close out thank you way to go women hey come on look at these women this is you this is women's march right here babe right here you ready to fight yeah. right it's hot out but that is not gonna we're gonna be a lot hotter with the heat and pressure that we apply to legislators to make change as we build this healthcare movement right yeah, yeah. all right I just want to give you an update with uh, our comrades over at uh, DSA and uh, CCI team got into a bus this morning to go drive down to David Young's house where we delivered messages in pill bottles and we actually got kicked off. Uh, the, the policeman, the one policeman in Van Meter was a very nice man. but. <laughs> Uh, he kicked us off, but he allowed us for our pill bottles to stay on the porch. Then we drove over to Terrace Hill to deliver a letter because Governor Reynolds is staying quiet with the mess and the crisis that she has created with Iowa's Medicaid privatization. And this is all because w what we're doing is all because we're building a movement. It's not a just about coming out today or calling your senators tomorrow. It's about having your feet in the street every day. S because Senator Ernst, Senator Grassley, and Representative Young need to be aware that there's a healthcare movement in this town. Not just in this town, but in this state. Thank you.